Your very joy here live today with Archbishop Lerone A. Harden II. How you doing today, Bastion? I want to talk about the scandal and one of the scandals that was, you guys had tax fry in the ministry and you know because you guys just popped up out of nowhere with an 18 million dollar facility so is there anything that you can tell us about the tax fry that you had you know skimmering in your ministry tax fry no 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 we set up stuff for Giblify. we put our stuff out and people start donating and start giving because I believe that when you follow God and you're obedient to his word, God has no choice but to bless you. Come through every time. We don't have to be no fraud. Trust me, if we was a fraud church, God would have been shut us down and sent fire from heaven. I want to ask you, there were some rumors and scandals going around about you and your wife weren't, you know, happy together. And you guys was actually trying to call it off. But one of your bishops told you that that wasn't a way. And that's the only reason that you guys stayed together. First of all, there are no scandals. Me and my wife have been happy for 35 years. Next question. <laughs> he shut that dude down. Oh, my bad. All right, uh, Pastor, I uh, didn't mean to offend anyone. Next, I want to talk about your musicians. Uh, there were some rumors that they were going around sleeping with anyone and everyone in the ministry. Uh... Would you care to comment about that? Because I know that it was getting out of hand. You guys were like really on Facebook, you know, one of your, your organists, he got tagged in some things that was ungodly, if you will. First of all, I talked to whatever musician before I brought them on. I hired them. This is ministry. I brought them on. Whatever they do, God is in control. They are grown, grown. I'm not finna sit here and do all that unless God tells me and ordains me to do it. Next question. All right, next question. I want to talk about your daughter. Now, we know that she's very decorated when it comes to certificates and awards and achievements. And I know you're very proud of her. But lately, she has found herself on the other end of, you know, being passed around, if you say. Uh, because, you know, she was in a relationship with, with the organist. Once again, that's not a good fit. And then she was in a relationship with the deacon. And then she was in a relationship with the usher. And then she was in a relationship with the, uh, one of the pastors, one of the youth pastors. And it's like she was being passed around, you know, like a joint, if you will. Now, you know, they do say, they did say that she was married. But from what we see on Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram, and there was a rumor about the OnlyFans, would you care to comment about what your precious baby girl has been doing these last couple of months? What about my daughter? My daughter's married. The Bible says when a man leaves his mother and father, cleaves to their wife, she's left and cleaved to her husband. Whatever they do in their relationship has nothing to do with me. This, you're sitting here bringing up stuff that you see on Facebook. I come on assignment and for stuff for the kingdom and for the body of Christ. If it's none of that that has nothing to do with ministry and what God has ordained me to do, I'm not going to answer no more of those questions. Next question, and it has to be about ministry. And you know, I just want to ask you a question. When you say ministry, is your ministry for real? No pun intended. Is your worship for real? Because we have a whole lot of prophets and pastors on, you know, the network every, you know, day. And they come in and they say all these things and they say that they love God. But you see other things that otherwise, man, you know, I just want to, you know, clarify that you, you are the real deal. In fact, <laughs> any word on that? I'm not like these phonies and fake prophets on TV that say, name and claim and proclaim. No, 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 no. We believe in obedience and faith. God and most importantly holiness and that is one thing that I will not ever do. I just want to thank y'all for having me come on the show today and evangelizing to the people of God. I really thank y'all for allowing me to come work the ministry that God has ordained and not only for the uh the compensation that you guys also as well. I mean really it's not about money to me at all it's about ministry but I appreciate what you guys are giving me for this and I appreciate you guys' time. You uh, got a call that it was 50, 50, you know. Are you gonna do this for fifty thousand? Oh, that'd be a plus. I can give it to you right now. Fifty thousand, right? Oh, fifty thousand. Ah. Uh, uh, 
We ain't, we ain't got fifty thousand. We were spending more to pay you like five five thousand. Then why would fifty all oh, fifty hundred five grand? Well, I mean either or it's okay. I mean I planned on with that money going out to the poor neighborhood. I flew for on my own jet here. You know what I'm saying? Take care of the pilot and everything that needs to be done. But I'm looking to take that money and bring it back and put it into the storehouse. You know what I'm saying? Go out into the homeless and help the people. We, we don't have it like that. You know, we know you're a big time pastor, but you know, we're a small time news station. But we try to get you on here so we can, you know, get up there. Or well, maybe if you pay your tithes enough, you had to worry about that problem. Well, it, you know, I'll pay my tithes. But the producer, I, I, I can't say too much. I want a job. But I want to thank you for coming here. Any last words, Pastor, before we leave? I have to do this because discipleship is very, very important in this day and time and age, especially with the youth. If you're watching right now, just lift your hands. And I want you to, to repeat after me. Say, Lord God, I am a sinner. I have sinned against thee. Save me, Lord God. Come into my heart. And change who I am and change me to the person you want me to be. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose with all power in your hand. And Lord God, most importantly, I, I say you are my Savior. And there's no other God before you. If you spread that simple prayer, you are born again and you are saved. Before you get off because you're starting your new journey as a Christian and on that as a son, as a, as a new heir. If you have your Bible, turn to Proverbs with me. It's in the Old Testament. I want you to turn to Proverbs 3 and 5. I'm just leave you with this right here. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Right there, when you're going through your trials and your hard times, you don't want to lean on your own understanding. You want to look to God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask for or think. When you put him first, like my brother Joel Osteen said in ministry, he's going to take your places you've never been. Get in a Bible-based church and watch God work everything out. God bless you today.